Hello friends! Are you ready for chapter four of the Dragon of Blue Land? Here we go! In the cave. As the men went about packing up knapsacks and putting out the fire, the dragon carefully crept over up the mountain slope. It's a good thing they don't know that the cave does have another entrance, but I wonder if I can still squeeze through it. It was the tunnel through which he had gone when he ran away to sit on the cloud. At that time, only he and his two youngest sisters were small enough to fit into it. Maybe, just maybe, I can still get through, he thought. He hurried up the dry, rocky slope of the mountain, racing to get to the tunnel before the sun broke over the rim of the desert. I've got to rescue them, he thought frantically. Over the gap between two snow-capped peaks, he galloped, and then down the beautiful green alpine meadows in the center of the mountain circle. Here. Streams babbled down the slopes to a bottomless lake. Masses of wildflowers, gentians, butterfly weed, painted cup, all colors paraded along the brookside. In the pastures, everywhere were giant snapdragon plants, looking more and more like bushes than flowers. But the dragon did, have not, did not have time to stop and gaze at his beautiful home in the great high mountains of Blue Land. Already, the sun was reaching over the horizon lighting up the sky. Here it is, he panted, and he dove into a thick clump of snapdragons growing over the entrance to a small tunnel. He had seen the men across the lake guarding the cave with an enormous net. I wish I knew what they were planning to do next, he thought, but it's too late now. I'll have to wait until dark. He tried to pass into the tunnel, but the roots of the snapdragons had grown over the entrance and the dirt had washed in from above. Take carefully, they might notice the stir in the bushes, he warned himself as he cleared the way. At last, he could fit into the hole and he started the long trip to the, through the tunnel. I might get stuck at any moment, he groaned as the tunnel turned corners and gradually dug deeper into the side of the mountain always only just big enough for him to squeeze through. On and on he crawled, and just when he thought he would surely get to the large part of the cave, he got stuck. He pushed and wiggled, but he could not get through. Tears rolled down his blue cheeks. I wanted so badly to see my family, he sniffled, but maybe they're near enough to hear me now. And he whispered, Mother, Father, are you there? Who's that? asked a voice that sounded like his sister, Eustatius. It's Boris, cried his mother. Oh, Boris, Boris, we thought we'd never see you again. Come on into the cave. We're in terrible danger. I know, said Boris the dragon, but I can't squeeze through the tunnel. Oh, I do wish I could. But listen, whatever you do, don't go near the main entrance to the cave. Many men are waiting there with an enormous net. Don't know yet what they plan to do with it, but I'll try to find out tonight if nothing happens before then. I think they're afraid to come in and get you. They don't know how harmless we really are. Anyway, keep calm and count on me. I have a friend who may be able to help. And if you don't hear from me soon, it'll be because I've gone off to get him. Now I'll have to go back out again. I must stay near the tunnel entrance so I can get out easily when I have a chance. Goodbye and Boris backed out for what seemed like hours and hours until he came out among the roots of the snapdragon bushes. He peered through the leaves across the lake and counted 16 men standing in a row outside the cave. A breeze sprang up across the lake and carried their voices over the water to him. They'll come out when they get hungry. They'll come out when they get hungry enough, said one man. But how do you know they won't be fiercer when they're hungry and have been trapped for some time? Me? I'd rather go in after them right now. Go in after them? said a third man. Why, we don't even know anything about the cave. Suppose it does have more entrances. The dragons may have escaped already. And what about pitfalls and rock slides in there? We ought to know more about this. No, the thing to do is to leave ten men here in guard and send the other six to search for other entrances and to have a look at the rock formation around here. Good idea, said the man who had come down the mountain to the campfire. The wind changed and the dragon could only hear confused sounds of talking. 
the men seemed to be deciding who would stay and who would go. They'll find me for sure if I stay here, and I don't want to trap myself too, thought the dragon. Daylight or no, I'd better fly and get Elmer. He'll know what to do if we can get back in time. Quickly, he fitted the snapdragon roofs over the tunnel hole, arranging them carefully so that they wouldn't look newly dug up. Then, keeping close to the ground, he crept through the green meadows and up, up, up to the gap between the mountain peaks. He took one last look at the beautiful blue lake surrounded by the green, green meadows, felt quite sure he hadn't been seen, and then plunged down the rocky slope on the other side. Up in the air he flew, shielded from the eyes of the men by the circle of the mountains. And that is the end of chapter four. We'll read chapter five next. Back to Nevergreen City. I hope you all enjoyed it. Get ready for chapter six in our next video. All right, and bye-bye.